yarn. No. No, we don't want the tone to be exclusive yarns. Part one transmission dubbed. Terry, come on, it's starting. Tonight at nine on Television South. Episode 92. I bet Tamara doesn't tell Dickin about the Vatman. Shh. needles, 60 pence for the pattern, £2.86 for the wall. Lovely man's colour. Did you want a digital row counter? They're on special offer at £1.99. I've already got mine. I don't know how I'd manage without one. Not sure? Well, I'll put one aside for you in case you change your mind, because I wouldn't want a regular customer like you disappointed. So, where was I? 95 pence for the needles, 60 pence for the pattern, £2.86 for the wall. I do like that colour. So altogether, that's six and five. That's, that's four pounds eighty-six. No. <laughs> Let's call it four pounds. Else we'll be here all day. I know you're in a hurry, and the post office will be closing soon. The quickest way is turn right outside the shop, past the restaurant, Tapioca's, turn left by Toddler's Wells Nanny Agency. Got that good? You better be off then. Don't forget your wool, Mrs King. Bye-bye. <laughs> Lovely man's colour. Amanda? Yes, Mrs Goldblatt? What happened to that order of two player kiwi? I, I did ring them last week, Mrs Goldblatt. They said they were having trouble with the two ply due to the holiday period. Well, I wish you'd told me, Amanda. I've had people asking willy-nilly for it, and Tamara's been waiting for weeks. You know what she's like if she doesn't get her wall. All hell's let loose. Get on to them immediately. And tell them if we don't get that wool pretty damn quick, we are going to cancel our regular order. But they're our main suppliers, Mrs Goldblatt. I don't care. I won't have this country run by one or two shoddy wool merchants. I'll do it now, Mrs Goldblatt. And while you're about it, you can put the kettle on. Yes, Mrs Goldblatt. Amanda? There's £4.30 and two luncheon vouchers in the till. Yes, I know. We have had a busy morning. Peppa! Tamara! I know. Don't say another word. I've had stern words with the suppliers. They blame it all on the holiday period. It's too late. The damage is done. Look at this sweater I was knitting for Dickon. One sleeve's shorter than the other. That's why I'm here. You're not having trouble with your tension again, are you? I've never had trouble with my tension. Oh, 
other than Dickens' operation when I... I admit I dropped a couple of stitches here and there. How is Dickon? A lot of men manage quite successfully with just one. I haven't come here to talk about Dickon. I realise that, Tamara. Let's talk about it over a cup of tea. Amanda, make that three teas. Yes, Mrs. Goldblatt. I haven't time for tea. I've got to get back to tapiocas. It's not easy running a busy restaurant in the Pantiles, single-handed. It's not easy running a busy wool shop in the Pantiles single-handed. You do have Amanda. Amanda is only temporary until she gets placed as a nanny. I took her on as a favour to Estelle. Estelle couldn't place her. She said Amanda doesn't get on very well with children and she lied about her qualifications. You mean she's not a fully qualified nanny? Apparently not. Estelle's been very good about it, only because there is a chronic shortage of nannies this side of Seven Oaks. Oh, I know. Bevel is at her wit's end. She got through three in the last month. You mean Tom got through three in the last month? <laughs> He's certainly been very peculiar since he bought that art gallery. Oh, milk and sugar. Milk and sweeteners for me, Amanda. Tamara. Oh, I haven't got time for tea. I've got to get this sorted out. Dickens very sensitive about these things. We've had words. And I do not wish to end up in the divorce courts over a faulty digital row counter. Tamara, I'm so sorry. Why didn't you let me know sooner? Well, I didn't know until I'd sewn the pieces together. I put my entire trust in that counter. I'm sorry now I ever discarded my manual one. Dickon and I had a silent breakfast this morning. Tamara, what can I say? Of course I will. Give you your money back. <laughs> That's the least you can do, Pepper. But what about my sleeves? What about Dickens' sleeves? I haven't time for a renit. Tamara, I've got a brilliant idea. Well, I hope it's better than your last one, Pepper. I've still got a drawer full of those knitted telephone covers. I still use mine. At night. As I was saying, hmm? all you have to do is take these sleeves off. Unravel the wool, knit a basic border, sew it round the sleeve holes, and you've got a lovely sleeveless affair. And here's a little bonus. With the wool you've got left over, you can knit a matching tie. Very dickin. We're all out of sweeteners, Mrs. Goldblatt. You'll find some in my handbag under the elastic webbing. Right you are, Mrs. Goldblatt. Well, I'm not entirely satisfied, Pippa, but it will have to do. I've got to get back to Tapiocas and start setting up for lunch. You haven't heard the last of this, Philippa. Amanda, make that two teas and a stiff gin. Make that a double. Estelle, you mustn't remember what the doctor said. <sighs> to hell with doctors. I've had my belly full of doctors. My last husband was a doctor. Estelle, you've been drinking. Oh, very perceptive of you, Pippa, pearl and play. <laughs> Time I went. Lunch, you know. Yes, that's it. Run along to Tatty Tapiocas with its limp lettuce and mouldy cheese. Everything's fresh at Tapiocas. Except the owner. Oh. Estelle, everything will look quite different after a nice cup of coffee. Amanda, make that two teas, one gin and a large black coffee for Estelle. Yes, Mrs. Goldblatt. How can things look quite different for me? Hmm? Me, who lost my husband last summer. Me, who found him again this winter. Me, who's been dried out more times than Esther Williams. Me, who's been sent abroad more times than Judith Chalmers. Me, who's had more abortions than the Dagenham Girl Pipers. And you say to me that things will look quite different after a nice cup of coffee. Estelle. Well, I don't want your coffee. I don't want your wool. I don't want your sympathy. And most of all, I don't want your digital row counter. I'm glad I'm not the only one. But I'm the only one. The only one running that ruddy nanny agency. The only nanny agency without a nothing nanny on its books. I'm not surprised. Well, I'm surprised. I'm surprised all my nannies left me. I thought my nannies loved me. You mean the way you thought Dickon loved you? Oh, I don't think I don't know. You can't pull the wool over my eyes. I said lemon in you, Jane. Perhaps not. So that's why you wanted the chunky Shetland tweed, Estelle. You mean you sold her wool, knowing it was for my dickon? How oh, could you, Pippa? I am a businesswoman. What happens to my wool and accessories after they've left these premises is no concern of mine. Yes, dickon knitted me the best pair of leg warmers I've ever had in my life. I didn't know dickon could knit. There's a lot you don't know about dickon. There's a lot you don't know about me. 
There's a lot none of you know about me. There's a lot Royal Tunbridge Wells doesn't know about me. There's a lot I don't know about me. Perhaps I can provide a few answers, Tamara. The milk's gone off, Mrs. Goldblatt. Use the powdered. You'll find it next to the zips. Open-ended or fixed? Zips are zips, Amanda. Yes, Mrs. Goldblatt. You see, Estelle, you wondered why you lost your husband last summer and found him again in the winter. Well, he did not just walk back into your life again like that. He was having an affair with Tamara. Never! They used my stockroom for their torrid, clandestine meetings. <gasps> I know, but business is business. <gasps> then one day, I was just sorting through a new order of crochet cotton when I heard an ugly noise coming from the back. I went to investigate, and there, behind the selection of odd balls, I found Tamara and your husband. He was stabbed through the heart with one of my finest number nine knitting needles. I thought he was dead. Tamara thought he was dead. He thought he was dead. We all thought he was dead. Was he dead? The needle missed his heart by a millimeter. He had to be operated on immediately. He daren't be moved. I was in a fix. As chance would have it, one of my regular customers was a qualified surgeon. He owed me a favor. I called him. He came. There was so much to do. I had to sterilize all my needles. And there, in my stockroom, a miracle was performed. Your husband lived. That was a miracle. But that doesn't explain late summer and autumn. Where was he? Your husband had one of the most serious operations known to the medical profession. He needed to convalesce. Luckily, one of my regular customers has a clinic in Switzerland. He owed me a favor, so we sent your husband there. Meanwhile, your husband was put on the missing persons list. It was the only solution. You mean his amnesia was a hoax? It was the only way we could explain his disappearance. Don't forget to explain how much you made out of it all, Pepper. As I said, I am a businesswoman. It was only fair play. We'll see about fair play. I want your husband, Estelle. And I'm going to love him. Tamara! Oh. Don't be a fool! Uh, You'll ruin everything! No! no. no. Oh, here we are! Two teas, oh. one gin, a large black coffee. Ah. Jumbo. I've hit my thumb. And don't call me Jumbo. Sorry, Terence. No, no, don't come in yet. It's not finished. All right, I haven't seen anything. I'll make you a cup of coffee before Harry arrives. Do you think Harry will like it? Of course he'll like it. He's the founder member. Let's face it, Terry. Nobody but you could dream up this in the spare room. I thought if we we're going to carry on doing this, we might as well do it properly. That's what I like about you. You're a perfectionist. Filter or instant? Whatever's easier. No, no, you've done all the work. You choose. I don't mind. You know I can't stand it when you faff about. It makes no difference to me whether you have filter or instant. Just make a decision, one way or the other. All right, I'll have instant. Fine. I'm sorry, Ian. It's just that tonight is a very important occasion for me. I want everything to be perfect. Come and have a look and tell me what you think. Come on.
Well? Shouldn't the crochet hooks be on the other side? Is that all you can say after all my hard work? You said you wanted everything to be perfect. That's the first thing Harry will notice. You know what he's like. Well, you better move them then. And anything else that isn't quite right. I'm going to make myself a cup of coffee. Filter. That's Harry. He's ten minutes early. Calm down. He'll love it. I'll let him in. I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Pinch me and tell me it's not a dream. It's marvellous. If I didn't know I was in your spare room, I'd swear I was in the shop itself. You've done it beautifully. Where'd you get all these accessories? Oh, Ian got most of them. Yeah, but you did all the work. Where would Fanny Craddock have been without her Johnny? This is what I call a professional job. After all these years, it's like a dream come true. There's nothing else to say. What can you say about perfection? Shouldn't those crochet hooks be on the other side? Can I get anyone a drink? Harry. I mustn't drink with my ulcer, but I wouldn't say no to a cup of tea. I'll do it. I was making a cup of coffee when you arrived. Talking of ulcers, am I glad that Richard's not coming anymore? Every time he came into the room, my nerves used to stand on end. Well, you know me, I'm easy going, but there was something about him wasn't right. I know what you mean, Harry, but we needed an Amanda. He didn't put his heart into it, like we do. Look, it's not a hobby, it's a way of life. It's not going to be the same without an Amanda. Hey, I almost forgot. Guess what happened the other day? A fella comes into the shop, said he wanted a dress for his wife. Straight away, I could tell. I showed him this dress, I showed him that dress. All of a sudden, I see his eyes light up at this plain cotton shift with the sash belt and the Peter Pan collar. Sounds like the one Amanda wore last week. Exactly what I thought. So I let him browse a bit. And then I started humming the theme tune from Exclusive Yarns. Die, 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 die. Right away, he starts telling me it's his favourite programme and he hadn't missed an episode since it started. I knew I was on the right track. I thought to myself, what can I lose? You told him? I told him. There's a few of us, we meet once a week and dress up as the various characters. But funnily enough, we've lost our Amanda. But he seemed doubtful. He said, I'm a married man with two children. I said, I'm also married, I've got grandchildren. I don't say anything if twice a week my wife goes to the casino. It's her form of relaxation. So she doesn't say anything if once a week I go out and wear a frock. It's my form of relaxation. Then I saw a little twinkle in his eye. So I said, look, go round the back to the stockroom and try it on. I'll make sure no one comes in. See how you feel. How did he look? Fitted him like a glove. Of course, he wasn't wearing the right accessories, but that cut suited him. Oh, simple but flattering. Do you think he'd fit in with us? Well, we'll soon find out. He's coming round tonight. Uh, he'll be here any minute. Tonight? Did you give him the address? No, he's a mind reader. What does he do? He works on the tube. He's a driver. Which line? He was on the Northern, but he's been transferred to the Bakerloo. Ah, that'll be him. I'll go. He's bound to be feeling a bit nervous. I hope everything looks all right. I want to make a good impression on a new Amanda. It'll look lovely when everything's in the right place. Everything is in the right place. Terry, Ian, I want you to meet Malcolm. Hello. 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 Malcolm, isn't it wonderful? The boys have built the shop from exclusive yarns in their spare room. Yeah. Terry did all the work. I just helped out here and there. Well, I couldn't have done it without you, Ian. He's given up all his spare time to build this. Yeah, but you drew up the basic plan, Ian. You've always been the creative one. He's a window dresser. But I couldn't have done all this. So. Perfection. So what's happened to this cup of tea you've been promising? Oh, yes. Tea, Malcolm. Coffee? Something stronger. Can of lager. Uh, tea, thanks. Milk and sugar? Uh, milk, no sugar, thanks. Tea, no sugar for Malcolm. Tea, one sugar for Harry. Filter coffee for Terence. And a large gin for me. I'll give you a hand. Lovely boys.
when do we uh, dress up? Be patient. Have you learnt your lines? The first bit was a bit tricky, but I'm all right on the rest of it. I videoed it last night, then played it back several times, like you told me. Yeah, good boy. That Richard never learned his lines. All he cared about was wearing a dress. Yeah, I've got a good memory. You have to under tubes. I suppose you do. Mm. So anyway, after we've had a cup of tea, we put our frocks on, do our hair and makeup, and then we watch the tape of last night's episode. When it's over, we talk about what happened and what they were wearing. Then we pretend. I'm Pippa, Terry's Tamar, and Ian does a lovely Estelle. Nothing else goes on, does it? I mean, I like wearing a dress, but I'm not gay. Yes, and I've known Terry and Ian for nearly three years. They never once laid a finger on me. Yeah, I've got nothing against them. I'm just not like that. Listen, when we've all got our dresses on, you'll see there's nothing to worry about. Tea for Harry. Tea for Malcolm. Thanks. Well, shall we get started? <clears throat> I left my dress in the car. Better go and get it. You know, I still can't get over the fact you built the shop with your own bare hands. Don't you think it's wonderful, Malcolm? Yeah. But shouldn't those crochet hooks be on the other side? VT9168 uh, exclusive yarns, part two, dubbed, transmission. So that's £3.18 for the wall, two, 
£2.99 for the knitting bag on special offer, a real bargain that, and £1.50 for sewing your cardigan together. There may be a delay on that, Mrs Goblatt's had a bit of an accident. Nothing serious. So, that's £7.89. No? Let's call it seven or we'll be here all day. That's lovely. We'll give you a call as soon as your card is ready. Goodbye, Mrs King. Lovely woman. Always gives me the correct money. At last, the two-ply kiwi and don't we need it. Now, Mrs Goblat, you know what the doctor said? You're not to lift anything heavy after your unfortunate incident. It was an accident, Amanda. It could happen to anyone. I blame Estelle. The gun went off by accident. The bullet ricocheted off your tea tray and lodged itself in my lower arm. Luckily, one of my regular customers is a vet. He owed me a favour. I called him. He came and removed the bullet. Hush, hush. Because we don't want an ugly scandal, do we, Amanda? No, Mrs Goblatt. But the vet said I was to look after everything until you were fully recovered. Because we wouldn't want to lose you, would we, Mrs Goblatt? Pippa! Tamara, don't. Let's pretend it was all a bad dream. Bad dream? It was a nightmare. I haven't slept for weeks. I've closed tapiocas. Dickens gone into liquidation. And to top it all, I'm getting anonymous phone calls from Estelle. How is Estelle? Mrs. Oxenford. There were 22 empty gin bottles when I passed her door this morning. Not a good sign. She'll drink herself to death. Amanda, Tamara and I would like two very hot, very strong cups of black coffee. Filter or instant? Coffee is coffee, Amanda. Yes, Mrs. Goldblatt. That girl is getting ideas above her station. Oh, she's been a pillar ever since the accident. You need two hands to run a wool shop? The vet said I would be as good as new within six weeks. Well, let's hope so, for all our sakes. Where would Royal Tunbridge Wells be without exclusive yarns? Oh, thank you, Tamara. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tamara. Oh, I know you're going through a sticky patch at the moment. I just want you to know that I am a real friend. If you ever need anything, don't be afraid to ask. Oh, Pippa. Oh, very kind. Could you lend me £10,000? You see, I've got a bit behind with the bills and I may have to sell tapioca. Maybe it's for the best. Well, look who it isn't. Madame Dufarge and Lucretia Borgia. Estelle, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be running your nanny agency? What nanny agency? Hmm? I lost my licence at 11 o'clock this morning. They took it away from me. Me! who took a crumbling nanny agency and put it on the map. Me, who had 47 qualified nannies on her books, and me, who gave you Amanda. Estelle, you're upset. Of course I'm upset. How would you feel, hmm? That nanny agency meant the world to me. It's all I had left in my life. Other than the bottle. And Dickon. You can have him back now he's gone into liquidisation. Sleeveless sweater and all. Here we are, two black. Oh, hello, Estelle. Mrs. Oxenford. If I'd known you were here, I'd have got you a large gin. Mrs. Oxenford's about to leave, aren't you, Estelle? What a pity. Because I thought it was about time we all had a little talk. Talk? Talk about what? About a certain little incident with a gun. You mean accident with a gun, Amanda? Call it what you like, Pippa. I mean, we're all adults here, aren't we, ladies? Amanda, if you've got something to say, I'd rather you said it. I think it's time I was leaving. Stay right where you are, Estelle. Or should I call you Betty Cartwright? Oh! I want you to know, Tamara, that I'm a real friend. And if you ever need anything, don't be afraid to ask. Pippa, how very kind. Can you lend me £10,000? I've got behind with my bills. I may have to sell tapiocas. Maybe it's for the best. Well, look who it isn't. 
If Adney Hinge and Hilda Brackett... Uh, Ian, how many more times? Will you stick to the script? I'm sorry, Jumbo. I was only trying to liven the scene up a bit. Teddy and I were doing very nicely, thank you. The role Shakespeare players, we're not, but we enjoy it. I'm glad somebody does. Ian, you've been like this ever since Malcolm joined us. What's the matter? What's the matter? As if you didn't know. It's not me who's changed since Malcolm came on the scene. What do you mean by that? Don't play the innocent with me. I've seen the way you behave every time you see Malcolm. You can hardly keep your eyes off him. I just thought he looked rather nice in that tartan skirt of his. Can you get on with it, please? I'm waiting to make my entrance. Sorry, Malcolm. Ian gave us the wrong cue. I'm terribly sorry, Malcolm. We'll go from just before your entrance, if that's all right with everyone. <coughs> Tamara. You can have Dickin back now. He's gone into liquidization, sleeveless sweater and all. Here we are, two black. Oh, hello, Estelle. Mrs. Oxenford. If I'd known you were here, I would have got you a large gin. Mrs. Oxenford's about to leave, aren't you, Estelle? What a pity. Because I thought it was about time we all had a little talk. Talk? Talk about what? Can we stop for a minute here? Yes, Malcolm. I didn't really believe the way you said that line. Remember, Estelle's going through a very rough time. She's drinking heavily, her business is in ruins, she's on the verge of a nervous breakdown. So could you give it a bit more feeling, please? I've been playing Estelle for three years. I think I know slightly more about her than you do. May I remind you that you've only been playing Amanda for a few weeks. You've barely scratched the surface of that two-faced shop assistant. I think he's doing rather well. Well, you would, wouldn't you? You think Malcolm's perfection, like oh. your set. Hey, boys, boys, calm down. Remember, we're supposed to be enjoying ourselves. Look, I'm the founder member, and as far as I'm concerned, you should all get Oscars. Now, Malcolm, will you say the next line? Yeah, sorry, Harry. Let's talk about a certain little incident with a gun. You mean accident with a gun, Amanda? Call it what you like, Pippa. I mean, we're all adults here, aren't we, ladies? Amanda, if you've got something to say, I'd rather you said it. I think it's time that I was leaving. Stay right where you are, Estelle. Or should I call you Betty Cartwright? <sighs> Betty Cartwright? Who's mm. Betty Cartwright? I always knew that Estelle had a shady past. You don't take to the bottle for nothing. Everyone misunderstands Estelle. Underneath it all, she's a very nice woman. She's not very nice to Amanda. Who'd be nice to Amanda? She's a scheming little bitch. I wish she'd stay in the stockroom where she belongs. Hey, hey, did you see the Sunday paper? There's a whole article about exclusive yarns, the truth behind the scenes. I put it in my handbag. Oh, you should only know what's going on. Apparently, the actress who plays Amanda, what's her name? Kelly Manson. Where is it? I've got the article here somewhere. Oh, Terry, I bought this lipstick the other day. It's not me, but I thought it might go nicely with one of your outfits. What do you think? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's lovely. Thanks. Uh, keep it. At my age, I'm not going to start experimenting with new colours. As my wife says, the older you get, the less makeup you should use. You should see some of the women come into the shop. They put it on with a trowel. I'll be told I don't need much makeup because I've got a good bone structure. I bet your bone structure's all the rage on the Bakerloo line. Ah, here it is. Amanda says I do. Hey, listen to this. Beautiful star of exclusive yarns, Kelly Manson, is about to prepare for her most demanding role. Kelly, 19... <laughs> That'll stretch you a bit, Malcolm. Kelly, 19, will be walking down the aisle with the director of exclusive yarns, Baz Hammond. <laughs> They first met just over a year ago when Kelly made her debut as Amanda the Nanny. Said the radiant Kelly, my original contract was for only one episode, but Baz Hammond, our director, was so pleased with my characterization that he suggested to the scriptwriters that my part be built up. I remember that episode. That's when we had to get Richard. Don't remind me. I know we never liked Richard, but looking back on it, he did have a certain quality. He never had the flair that Malcolm has. I've done a lot of acting, actually. I'm a member of the London Transport Players. No one would ever know. Played the lead in Oklahoma. <laughs> I bet you look a treat in buckskins. Yeah, I got some good write-offs, actually. They said I reminded them of Gordon McRae. <laughs> He's dead, isn't he? Do you want to hear the end of this story or not? 
Sorry, Harry. Right. Here's my part be built up. We asked Kelly if marrying someone of 63 <laughs> had caused any adverse reactions amongst friends and fellow artists. It was love at first sight, said the bashful Kelly, displaying her dazzling diamond engagement ring with matching bracelet. I don't look at Baz and see a 63-year-old man. I just see a man who I love. Kelly told us as she was about to take up her famous position behind the counter. <laughs> Marrying Baz will bring a maturity into my life. I feel I should reflect this in my portrayal of Amanda. I want to get rid of the dumb blonde image. I know how she feels. Yes, it's true, every word of it. Estelle Oxenford, knee Betty Cartwright, was a madame of a brothel in Plymouth Hill. When I first came to Tunbridge Wells and was interviewed by Estelle, I knew I'd seen that face somewhere before. It wasn't until I happened to be browsing through a five-year-old newspaper, <laughs> I never throw anything away, when I recognised who it was. You mean you don't remember the famous scandal of the MP and the bordello in Plymouth Hill? Yes, it's the same woman. Naturally, Mrs. Goblatt's very upset and her arm's no better. So, that's £1.50 for the Icelandic Lottie, one ninety nine for the digital row counter, wise decision, and £1.51 for the extra long knitting needles. Altogether, that's £5. £5. I haven't got all day. Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. King. You can do without customers like that. Amanda. What's the latest situation on the Angora? I told you before, Pippa. If you want to know, ring them. You know I can't use the telephone with my bad arm and I keep having these strange, dizzy spells. Have you seen the vet? He's very busy at the moment. There's been an outbreak of foot and mouth. I blame Estelle. I'm taking the afternoon off, Mrs Goldblatt. Amanda! Why? I've put a bid in for Estelle's nanny agency. And I think they're going to accept it. But how will I manage exclusive yarns without you? Oh, don't worry, Pippa. I wouldn't leave exclusive yarns for all the wool in the world. I'm sure I'll be able to run both businesses. Cup of tea, Amanda? Yes. Some Earl Grey would be nice. You'll find some in the caddy next to the satin ribbons. Shan't be long. Amanda? Tamara, don't. You know? Of course I know. He doesn't know. The whole of Tunbridge Wells knows. And Bromley South. How could he do this to me? Me, who kept that marriage going through thick and thin. Me, who nursed him through his hour of need. Me, who knitted him the finest pair of Argyle socks this side of the Medway. Cup of tea, Tamara? I haven't time for tea. Oh, nonsense. You've nothing else to do. Pippa? Yes, Amanda. <laughs> Make that two teas. Yes, Amanda. <laughs> the kettle's about to boil. <laughs> She's not getting any better. You're looking a bit fraught, Tamara. Why oh, wouldn't you? Have you just found out your husband was having an affair? An affair with a married man? A married man with a wife and two children? A married man who runs an art gallery? A married man... Who's been having homosexual affairs with every Tom, Dick and Harry in the Tunbridge Wells Sports and Y Centre? They told me he was walking the dogs. Now Tom's got my dick. And all I'm left with is empty tables at tapiocas. Maybe it's for the best tomorrow. The best? Nothing is for the best in my life, Amanda. My Cariff, 
is empty. Ha! Don't do anything stupid, Tamara. I can't find the sugar, Amanda. You'll find some under the sewing needles. Darning or embroidery? Needles are needles, Pippa. Yes, Amanda. Uh, uh. One naffin line they gave me. Ian, there's no need to use that language. I don't know why you're complaining. They stuck me in that stockroom and gave me a couple of coughs. All of a sudden, I'm Camille. I don't know what you're both complaining about. You know what it's like on these long-running series. We'll probably all do for a holiday. I don't want to say anything, Terry, but Tamara's last speech was not that of a woman who's going to Tolomelina's for a couple of weeks. Amanda was never off the screen. Well, usually she's in the stockroom. Don't I know? Remember what happened to Pippa's husband? He went in the stockroom to make a cup of tea, and you never saw him again. No, I don't even want to think about it. For the past three years, this has been my release. What am I going to do every Thursday night? What am I going to do with 14 frocks? I can't very well sit at home in a skirt and blouse. Well, I just bought a whole new summer outfit. Well, why didn't you come to me? Well, if the worst comes to the worst, we could all start watching EastEnders. Oh, at my age, I'm not going to start playing one of those Cockney women. At least with exclusive yarns, thank you very much. You'd had a bit of class. Except for Amanda. Ian, if you're going to start on again about Malcolm, I mean, it's not his fault the part's been built up. But isn't it funny that ever since Malcolm joined us, our parts have all got smaller? It's just a coincidence. So what do we do? Sit around cross-dressed and watch Malcolm hog the stage all night? Well, there's worse ways of spending a Thursday evening. I'll go. Ian, Terry's right. It's not Malcolm's fault. It's one of those things. Now look at it from his point of view. If we're written out, where's he going to go on a Thursday night? I'm sure Terry will find other ways of entertaining Malcolm. Ian, it's all your imagination. He's a married man with children. Sorry, I'm late. Someone threw themselves on the line at Arlesden. A friend of yours. It's easily done. Same thing happened last week in Wembley Park. It's a big responsibility driving a train. People don't understand the pressure you're under. You're responsible for all those lives. Not like being a window dresser. What would you know about window dressing? What would you know about anything artistic at all? I find Malcolm's portrayal of Amanda very artistic. His acting talent shines through. Well, pardon me for missing it. You got to understand, Malcolm. Ian's upset. We're all upset. In last night's episode, you were the only one who had anything to do. Well, about time my part was built up. When I first started doing this, all I had to do was make the tea. Well, you can bloody well make the tea somewhere else. Ian! Yeah. That's enough. If he goes, I go. Go? Go where? back to Malcolm's neat little semi with his wife and two kids. I'm sure she'd love that. Actually, I've left my wife. You've left your wife, Malcolm? Why? Malcolm's been having doubts. Oh, has Malcolm? Doubts? Doubts about what? I don't think we should talk about this now, Harry. Well, I think we should. 
It appears that Malcolm is coming out of his London regional transport siding. Terry didn't say that. He said I had doubts. Malcolm and I have been doing a lot of talking recently. Oh, have you? This is news to me. We've been meeting every Friday night at the Spread Eagle in Camden Town. It's the only night I can make it. Because I'm working late. Very convenient, Terry. Any more surprises? Ian, we have to talk. I'll make some tea. Malcolm, come and help. Oh, yeah, right. Malcolm, what do you mean you're having doubts? I don't think you're the only one to have doubts. Every marriage has its ups and downs. Even Sylvia and I have had the odd doubt or two. Listen, something will be sorted out, I'm sure. I wonder where they keep the sugar. This isn't easy, Ian. I think I'm in love with Malcolm. That's blatantly obvious. I don't want to hurt you, Ian. How very thoughtful of you, Terence. We've talked it through. Malcolm and I are going to rent a bed sit near the Elephant and Castle. It's for the best. It's on the Bakerloo line. What about me? Me who met you that day in Harvey Nichols. Me who bought this house with you. Me who pasted the wallpaper while you hung it. Me who loved you in spite of yourself. Me who was Estelle to your Tamara. Me. Who's now just me? Oh, boys, I'm sorry to interrupt like this. I know you've got some problems to talk over, but I can't find the sugar. Oh, you'll find it in the cupboard next to the flour. Plain or self raising? Flour is flour, Harry! Well, if I can't have you, Terry, nobody can! Ian, don't be a fool, you'll ruin everything! No, Harry, everything's ruined already, and you're crazy! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Hello, exclusive yarns. Amanda Ellsworth speaking, proprietress. No, I'm afraid Mrs. Goldblatt can't come to the phone. Who's speaking? Oh, hello, Mrs. King. No, your cardigan hasn't been completed yet. I'm afraid Mrs. Goldblatt won't be able to finish it. Ever. I thought you knew. She died last week of foot and mouth disease. Yes, very rare. Yes, indeed, a tragedy. As soon as it's ready, I'll let you know. I must dash. I've got to supervise the lunches at Tapioca's. <laughs> yes, what a shame about poor Tamara. None of us knew, and when we found out, it was too late. Yes, sleeping pills. I've taken over Tapioca's. Tamara would have wanted it that way. Yes, doesn't everything go in threes? Estelle was such a good friend, and to drown so tragically in her wine cellar. I've taken over the nanny agency. Estelle would have wanted it that way. Yes, everything's been left to me. Me, a simple, unqualified nanny. Me, a humble little shop assistant. Me, an ordinary girl from Plymouth Hoe. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. King. See you next week. <laughs> and now on Channel 4, The Kelly Manson Show, starring the exclusive Kelly Manson. It's here! It's now! It's The Kelly Manson Show! <laughs> i 
Not going away cause I'm here to stay in exclusive yarn. Gonna tell you a story about a girl I know. She was once a struggling actress on a TV show. So she went to church and prayed for guiding light from her protector. Now the show is hers all diamonds first. She married the director. Now her name's the same as here, she's undeniable.